I think it's maybe the only field on the marketing game that if you are a small brand, you can win against the, the huge brands only if you, you know, just if you play smart. And it doesn't really matter how much money you have because this is a model where your affiliates generate the revenue for you. So on the long run, you can easily create like a, a plan to earn twice, one from the influencers and one from the SEO because you have a lot of different traffic sources, all of them talking about your brand. And if you do it right, you can build all of these pages with specific keywords. So you will earn also from the SEO. Welcome to the Ecom X Factor podcast, where it's all about launching and scaling your business using sales funnels, automations, and smart marketing. And now, please welcome your host, the founder of Ecom X Factor, Yaron Bin. Hey, Ellie, how are you? I'm a good. Uh, hi, Yaron. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. We already started discussing before and I had to pause you a few times because it was so interesting. And I said, okay, let's keep it for, for the recording. So I'm sure that this episode will be very valuable. I also believe it will be very, very interesting for me because I, I love all the tactical stuff that you, you already shared with me. But for the people who don't know you, can you share a bit about your background before we get started and dive into all the juicy stuff? Sure, sure. So my name is Eli and I'm an affiliate marketing expert with a track record in managing large-scale affiliate programs and global partnerships. Over a decade of experience in the e-commerce and affiliate industry and having held like a leadership roles at companies such as Investing.com, Koya, Affiliates, the Affiliate Network. And throughout my career, I have been able to provide First revenue go to businesses by to by collaborating with the, the world's top affiliates, influencers, publishers, networks, and agencies. And, yeah, and I'm excited to, to to share my experience and the insights uh, on the world awesome. of e-commerce and affiliation on the process. Great. Sounds great. So how did you start with affiliate before we 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 dive into everything? How did you get started? Was it by chance or uh, did you get from a big brother or? <laughs> okay, actually it all started back then in 2010 or 11 and interest went live, okay? Mm -hmm. And I started to play, I just got in love with this platform. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, this is where I learned a lot about all kinds of stuff of affiliate marketing because mm -hmm. I just love the infographics and Pinterest mm -hmm. is a great place for infographics. So I created a lot of bots and etc. Mm -hmm. And then I started to start and do some to promote uh, jewelry online. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and, and Pinterest was a great place to promote jewelry because it's all about women, women mm -hmm. in the United States. And the traffic was free because back then mm -hmm. you can took any image and just change the URL and direct this image to your own website. So it was like mm -hmm. a black hat back then. Mm -hmm. So this way I generated a lot of traffic to jewelry offers. And uh, so this is how I started. And yeah, and then I just, you know, I just, by chance, I met another guy and, and he was a programmer. And then we started to create, you know, automations and stuff to accelerate the revenue. Mm -hmm. and, and this is how, yeah, and we actually, we opened a company and, and started to to generate high revenues with affiliation back then. Mm -hmm. Can you share like a given example of an automation that you built? Yeah, so in Pinterest, for example, I remember that there was like a hack that we somehow, you know, we, we, we I found like a software. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Ninja Pinner. Mm -hmm. It's like, it has a feature where you can invite a lot of people to your own group. Mm -hmm. We created a jewelry group. Mm -hmm. And somehow, I don't know why, maybe probably it was a bug, uh, Pinterest allowed you to invite as many people as you want to your own group board. Okay, a group board in Pinterest mm -hmm. is like a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. So we just, uh, you know, pushed the button on the, for the maximum and we created mm -hmm. uh, 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 the jewelry boards on Pinterest until I think uh, it, it got excluded and I believe that Pinterest still has raised all the red, uh, the red flags and they someday, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was on, by the way, it was on my 
on my wedding day, okay, <laughs> my, my partner came to me, told me uh, during the, uh, the wedding, Eli, <laughs> I need to tell you something. <laughs> tell him, what? So Pinterest on us, they, they somehow, they, they closed this gap and all of the, our uh, group boards are closed. Uh-huh. Uh, so this is how, yeah, we always try to find the, the hacks, but like I told you before, mm-hmm. in the long run, it doesn't really, you know, I, I don't believe on these uh, black tactics be- because I have experience with them, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. It's very fun, it's very mm-hmm. exciting, but uh-huh. for the long, I'm not sure that I will use it to my own brand. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, and we discussed this because it's as you said, it's it's very sexy, and it's uh, and I also I can I can see myself trying to automate stuff and trying to hack stuff, and I love it, but it's not it's not sustainable. Most of the time, you can exploit the loophole, but the loophole will be closed very very fast, and then it's mm. going to be a very sad day, <laughs> especially so, if your partner notifies you in your wedding. <laughs> maybe the the one one time I did like a hack that paid off for me, it was like I tried to do automation on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So we had like a product, we created a SaaS product, a search engine called Quoi, mm-hmm. and we found like uh, automation with uh, Zapier and Twitter, when we did auto mentioning uh, mm-hmm. for the followers of our competitors. So what mm-hmm. we did actually, we once one, uh, there, is, there was a, an option to mm-hmm. follow after new followers of your mm-hmm. competitors. So mm-hmm. our competitors, it was a, a search engine, or Google mm-hmm. and Yahoo. Mm-hmm. So each time a new follower of these competitors follow them, mm-hmm. automatically we we uh, did the uh, auto-mentioning, mm-hmm. like, uh, like an ad username, mm-hmm. hi, we have a new search engine, and, and mm-hmm. we upload a, a very cool GIF, mm-hmm. and we, we put a, a link to our own website, and uh-huh. it's like a hot prospect, because at the same mm-hmm. time, approximately, yeah, when mm-hmm. the user follow your competitor, we saw your GIF with, your, with the same product, and mm-hmm. we start. We generated like thousands of organic nice. traffic. This tactic, until again, uh, we closed this uh, gap. Mm-hmm. And today you cannot do the, you cannot do auto mentioning. But back then it was it was worse. It's like mm-hmm. traffic that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. And you, while you were talking, I thought about the fact that okay, we called it black hat before, but some of the things are just growth hacks, you know, like Airbnb, how do they build Airbnb? They use a growth hack, they, they scrape mm-hmm. the Craigslist, you know, yeah. and there are a lot of stuff like this. So how do you make a distinction between black hat and growth hack? Because people love growth hacks and people don't think that black hats are bad. <laughs> I'm doing like an exaggeration, mm-hmm. but what is the di- distinction? I'm not sure myself. So I'm asking, do you have a take on this? You know, if they don't catch you, so this is a growth hack. <laughs> <laughs> this is my take. <laughs> if they don't catch you, so uh-huh. otherwise, you know, you get fucked. But other, so you know, you yeah. need to be careful. You need to understand how to be, how to in and keep your, you know, your tactics alive. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard because once you see some tactic that that works for you, uh, you know, naturally you want to increase the volume, but mm-hmm. but you need to think. Always that all of these platforms have their own, you know, limitations and flags. And once you do something extreme, they will probably will notice this and, and the mm-hmm. party will, will be over. Yeah, for sure. For sure. This is something that I, when I do automation, so yeah, it's very tempting to scale it. But on the other hand, I'm trying to tell myself, okay, if you're going to be like a very greedy now and you will scale it, so they will ban you. So there's a happy medium between growing your automations and but you don't want to cross the, the line and try to be too greedy because then the the platforms will see what they, you're doing and uh, it's going to be the last day of the party like you said. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk a bit about White Hat and and I know that you manage your background is in affiliate marketing and managing partners and you also told me that you manage partner programs with more than 10k affiliates and i'm i'm just curious how how, how can you build this thing and how do you maintain this thing and you know just walk mm-hmm. me through this maybe share a bit about this specific story 
Okay, so I was working after I, I closed my, my SaaS product and one week after I closed, I started working at Affiliax. It's Affiliate Network with more than 10, uh, back then the, there was a, well, more than 10K affiliates, all type of affiliates, mm -hmm. media buyers, SEO, uh, influencers, publishers, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so basically I didn't recruit all of these affiliates. So it's mm -hmm. like once you work uh, on affiliate network on a big one so the work so you have the the traffic sources so mm -hmm. all you need to do is to create a, a good offer mm -hmm. and then to do the match be, be, between the affiliates the traffic sources and between the offer mm -hmm. and this is the challenge and mm -hmm. and yeah i managed like about 40 brands so mm -hmm. i was managing the e-commerce vertical of affiliates and some big brands like dji and mm -hmm. Also, Shutterstock was a SaaS product, Shutterstock, Bulkbox, Sandbird, mm -hmm. etc. And what I, I, I found out that a lot of brands, even the big brands, they don't know how to work with affiliates. And, and what, what I mean, I mean, because it's very simple. Working with affiliates is very simple concept. If you want mm -hmm. to, to work with them, you, you need to make sure that they will make their profits. If they mm -hmm. lose... They will stop. You don't want them to stop. So this mm -hmm. is the basic idea of working mm -hmm. with partners. Okay, because affiliate is a partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one, when you have like your own brand, you need you need to make sure you know start starting when you build the pro the, the funnel. Okay, mm -hmm. when you price your products. Okay, so you need to think about about the the pricing. You you want to make sure that so that your average order. It's high enough in a way that you will have enough margin to pay uh, a high payout to the affiliates. Mm -hmm. So this is this is what you need to do. Uh -huh. And once you have like a very attractive payout and a mm -hmm. good funnel, okay, because it's not only about the payout, it's, it's mm -hmm. the combination between the payout and the conversion rate of your funnel, okay? Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of, uh, you know, offers that offer a very small payouts, but the conversion rates are high, so it's very mm -hmm. attractive offer. So once you have the combination of, of high payout and a high conversion rate offer, everything is, is, is easier. And it doesn't really differ from brands that manage their own media buying, by the way. Mm -hmm. Because if you do your own media buying, you want to make sure that you have a, a high conversion rate mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you have enough margin to make profits. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly the same, but only one exception, you need to think about how you pay well to your partners. So mm -hmm. this is how the, the, the good brands that, that understood that, they mm -hmm. succeed. And, not mm -hmm. only, and, so, and this is, I believe, I think it's, it's the only field, maybe, maybe the only field on the marketing game mm -hmm. that if you are a small brand, you can win against the the huge brands mm -hmm. only if you you know just if you play smart mm -hmm. and it's, it doesn't really matter how much money you have mm -hmm. because this is a model where your affiliates generate the revenue for you mm -hmm. and once only once the money is in your pocket only then you pay them the commission after you know days or one month so you don't really need the big pockets to win mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what I love about nice. this channel. Nice, yeah, because it's cash flow positive. They 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 take all the expenses in a way. They take the risk, and then you pay them the payout. But mm -hmm. my question is, when cash flow is in this case, how do you come from zero to one? How how do I, let's say I start an offer? Okay. I have a flashlight or whatever product that I'm selling. And I say, okay, I bought it in AliExpress for two bucks or Alibaba mm -hmm. for one buck. I'm going to price it very high, like a margin of, I don't know, four or 500%. Let's say it's going to be $60, $60 per price. Mm -hmm. But how do I convince the false affiliates to come? Okay, so basically, if you have a good offer, a good payout and a good conversion rate flow. A lot of affiliates know how to find you without you do anything, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you build like good funnel, you know, you actually you know, talk with about this subject with so many experts in your mm -hmm. uh, in your podcast. 
so basically, you know, you need to have like a good bundle, good pricing, good upsells, mm -hmm. and to use all the, the tricks in order to, to make the average order higher as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. So some, nothing, is, you know, there is no secret about this. Ah, once, sure. you are, once you have, you know, a high average order, you have the ability to pay well. And mm -hmm. if you have the ability to pay well, you can recruit a lot of affiliates. And it's actually like you can recruit like a marketing, a lot of marketing experts mm -hmm. that working with you without any mm -hmm. retainer and without mm -hmm. any limits because you can theoretically recruit as many as possible and without any without any budget limitation. Mm -hmm. I see. But so just just to clarify, this is this isn't a way to start. Let's say we open a Shopify store. We first have to have our own in-house marketing and conversions and AOVs in order to show the affiliates. It's not something, or am I might be incorrect? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's not something that I can. Let's let's say instead of starting Facebook ads. I will try to convince affiliates uh, to start publishing, like advertising for me, without me showing them the numbers. It depends. Okay, it depends mm -hmm. what type of influence of affiliates you you are addressing. Okay, mm -hmm. I will uh, separate the two types of of affiliates. Okay, mm -hmm. there are the affiliates that they have the communities like influencers, or they have the mm -hmm. traffic like publishers' websites, mm -hmm. or they have like social groups, and and they they don't buy. The traffic they have the mm -hmm. traffic they they, yeah. they are the media so mm -hmm. for them it's very it's more easy to to say yes to your offer because the only they want to do is to monetize mm -hmm. their the traffic mm -hmm. so you can start your own affiliate program and address all of these type of affiliates and you can mm -hmm. do very well without mm -hmm. to 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 recruit even a single media buyer uh -huh. and if regarding the the media buyers the media buyers is for example, so yeah, so it's better to have your own test before you approach them. It's better mm -hmm. to 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 let them know, to tell them, hey, listen, I tried in-house uh, PPC test in Facebook or in Tabula mm -hmm. Outbrain or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is my results and this is uh, uh, my CPA. Okay, this is mm -hmm. uh, my cost per action. I am willing to pay you X, and but I'm open-minded. You know, if if mm -hmm. we will see together that you are very close to be break-even, so we can talk about this. So mm -hmm. you need to 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 give them a data and b to give them to feel like they are your your a true mm -hmm. partners. Mm -hmm. Interesting, and yeah, I think it's very important to emphasize this. That they, they it's as if as they are working with you or for you. They are actually like real partners. You need to be transparent, show them the numbers. Otherwise, they will just go to someone else who is who really considers them as a partner. Uh, definitely. Not only to show them the numbers with the media buyers, mm -hmm. a lot of times they, they want to, you know, to implement their own pixels on your site. So mm -hmm. give them. I give specifically to, to, to media buyers. I give them, I share with them my Facebook account, okay? Mm -hmm. I share with them a lookalike audiences. Because, mm -hmm. by the way, I don't care because on my own test, test, Okay, before the iOS 14, okay, I'm not like a professional media buyer, but when mm -hmm. I tried to do several tests, for me to run campaigns without any targeting worked well, mm -hmm. you know, like a look like one percentage. Mm -hmm. So I don't care to share with them uh, mm -hmm. any all of the data you want, yeah. uh, I will show it. So I don't care. So yeah, I think this is the key. Share all the data you have, share with them the, your best performing creative, uh, be responsive, and be flexible and mm -hmm. think that if they succeed, you succeed. It's a win-win yeah. situation. That's great. And okay, l let's keep building this uh, playbook or, or case study. So let's say, okay, I have a Shopify store. I, I have a Shopify store. I at which amount of sales or after what amount of sales or when do you, cons when do you think is a, a good stage for me to start approaching affiliates? And then where do I go? Do I go to ClickBank? Do I come to someone like you? Do I look in Apple? What do I do? How, just walk me through the whole process. But let's 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 think about like a store owner who is just start, literally not literally, but kind of starting out. He already has has some some signals. Uh, so I think you, you can start right away. Okay, mm -hmm. once your your funnel is ready. You can start and approach, you know, the first kind part of, uh, of affiliates. You can approach all the influencers and mm -hmm. uh, and all of the websites mm -hmm. uh, because 
as I told you before, they just want to monetize their traffic, so mm -hmm. there is no reason not to approach them. Mm -hmm. So basically what you need to do is to map all, all the types of affiliates that you want to approach before you start and approach them, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can create like a Google Sheet with, with the publishers, influencers, mm -hmm. okay? Media buyers, etc. Mm -hmm. And then you start and approach them and you tell them, okay, listen, I just started a Shopify store. Uh, if you have like some numbers, it's good. But uh, regarding mm -hmm. the influencers and publishers, you don't really need to give them any numbers. You mm -hmm. just tell them, hey, listen, I have a product is re is uh, very relevant to your audience. I mm -hmm. believe it's, it will give a lot of value to your audience. And maybe I can also give your audience a special discount. Mm -hmm. So not only they make money from this partnership with you, they give a lot of uh, value to mm -hmm. their audience. Okay, so this is one. Regarding mm -hmm. the, uh, for example, agencies. Mm -hmm. I recommend to find, you know, a lot of agencies publish on their websites, your customers. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, for example, you know that they publish uh, one of their customers has the same product like your, or on the same vertical, it's, it's mm -hmm. a good idea to approach them. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have numbers, okay. Even mm -hmm. if you don't uh, try uh, to spend a lot of uh, money on, on paid ads, because mm -hmm. they have the data, they have the experience, mm -hmm. they yeah. already promote businesses mm -hmm. like you. So there is a chance that they will agree to work with you straight away okay mm -hmm. and then i will create a list of affiliate networks okay mm -hmm. uh, affiliate networks are like the middlemen uh, there are a lot of affiliate networks out there not only uh, clickbanks and, and uh, cj mm -hmm. uh, there, there are hundreds okay mm -hmm. and it's very simple to find them it's like you can find them on on simple google search or you can mm -hmm. find them on linkedin search just look for affiliate networks, CPA networks, mm -hmm. and there, and there are more professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't really need like a good, you know, uh, experience with paid ads, but you need to have like a good funnel, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to pay well because usually uh, affiliate networks take a cut of twenty percent, like a commission. Okay, so mm -hmm. for example, if you tell them, listen, I give you one hundred dollar per each conversion. So mm -hmm. they will give $80 to their to the own affiliates yeah. and they will mm -hmm. keep the cut. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and yeah, and I think uh, it's never, uh, you know, you can start talking with affiliates straight away. This is my answer. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And would it, uh, would I need to do any convincing to the affiliate networks? Is there anything I should know before approaching them or will it just take me because basically it's a business model and they're taking 20%? No, it depends. Mm -hmm. uh, because for example, there are some networks that will check your offer internally with their own affiliates and they will try to understand if there is a demand for your offer. Mm -hmm. So the process, for example, in affiliates, the process was like this, like a, a brand come to us and I wanted to work with our affiliates and uh, we mm -hmm. told him, okay, listen, we need to check. And then mm -hmm. our affiliate managers try to, you know, they send uh, this offer to several big affiliates and they mm -hmm. gave the feedback. And if we mm -hmm. got like a good feedback, mm -hmm. so we, we took the offer, but uh, not all the affiliate networks work the same. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of affiliate networks are focused on a specific vertical. So if your business, your your brand is on the same vertical, high, high chances that they will agree. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. So let's say what are like the top five affiliate networks? Okay, I know ClickBank, everybody knows ClickBank but and, and CJ, but can you mention a few more? Because if you look up in Google, you, you have so many and some of them are irrelevant. So let's say for e-com, skincare or i don't know supplements what networks would you okay it's, it's like, i know it's mm -hmm. share sell it's for me it's like a commission junction i would say uh, max bounty okay mm -hmm. uh, for okay. ecom in canada it's like uh, one of the biggest affiliate networks mm -hmm. i would say a uh, affiliates mm -hmm. where i was working mm -hmm. and i'm not sure you know it's very it depends on your vertical so all you mm -hmm. need to do because it depends on the vertical so you need mm -hmm. just to check to do the the simple google search mm -hmm. affiliate network plus your vertical uh -huh. and you will find it okay mm -hmm. okay Cool. Interesting. And normally when I have guests on my show, I ask them like to send a few points before, before the podcast. So we will know what we discuss. And, and one of the things you wrote, ref share offers are not attractive for, prof for professional affiliates. Mm -hmm. So can you explain this? Let's say for media buyers, because mm -hmm. a lot, you know, media buyers, they, they want to calculate their chances before they start. 
And if you give them a rev share offer, they don't have the number to, to understand the probability for the success of this campaign. This is why a lot of media buyers tell you, listen, I need to have like a fixed price. Yeah, this is the simple question answer. Ah, I see. Okay, so they don't re- want rev share, they just want CPA, basically. CPA, yes. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes if you have like a very big brand and you, and you give like a ref share offer, so they can do like an arbitrage. It means that they do like, they ask the, the brand, what is the average order? And they take the, re- the, the chance that this number is true. And mm-hmm. then they take this number and do the calculation and they just start promoting you according to your, you know, data mm-hmm. that you provide. This yeah. is another way, but most of them, you know, want to get a fixed price. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. And can you share maybe a story of a brand that came to you who was succeeding, but not crazy? I mean, didn't skyrocket. And then what happened when you added a layer of affiliates? Yes. So I, I, I think the, the, my best seller product was a simple flashlight without mm-hmm. any uniqueness, without any patent or, or, or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got this brand when I was uh, at Affiliates. And mm-hmm. I, I believe it's called the Lumify, Lumify mm-hmm. X9. Mm-hmm. And this brand created like a good funnel with bundles of, you can buy, you know, between one to 10 flashlights on the bundle. Yeah, it, I, I remember it, it offered like a one or three or five or 10. And Anybody bought the, the 10? So, you know, the average order was two and a half. So this is what gave them the ability to pay well to the affiliates. So yeah, mm-hmm. some of them, you know, maybe buy the, the 10. Mm-hmm. Um, there is some, by the way, I know that the, in the US, they, they treat flashlights like a product of self-defense. This is what I, I understood later mm-hmm. on when I tried to understand why, why US, you know, people love to buy flashlights. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so this brand came to us and it was exploded. Okay. Mm-hmm. So a media bar started pushing this on, on Facebook, on a, a native ads like Tabula and Outbrain. Mm-hmm. And uh, it did very well. So it did so well until the point that the Tabu line refused to get new campaigns of flashlights because their feeds were all of the same and they, they wanted to stop it. Okay. Uh-huh. So, and it was like the same offer was running not only on affiliates, they, they, they play smart because they contact a lot of affiliate networks on the same time. Mm -hmm. And they created like uh, many funnels dedicated to each country, okay? Like Mm -hmm. uh, a funnel in in Italian and French. And and then I think it was like a lot of other small brands of of about the same flashlight came came, and all of them like succeeded, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was like, I I, I was in shock because Mm -hmm. I I always thought that you need like to have a special product or Mm -hmm. uh, uniqueness in order to succeed. And mm-hmm. then I saw, this is the first time I understood that you don't really need a, a lot, okay, mm-hmm. to, you know, you need a good funnel. Yes, you need mm-hmm. to price everything well, but you don't need the unique product in order to to, to do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, I know which flashlight are you talking about. And I also tried to sell it <laughs> back in the days when I was like doing dropshipping with a general store. And I never realized how how people are profiting from this. But as you said, as a marketer, you must realize that you don't know anything. And only when you start testing, you realize that your all most of your assumptions are incorrect, <laughs> and you you can't really know what what will work. And if something is is working, just don't break it. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I I agree. It, it, that's cool. And and maybe I would I wanted to ask you regarding the different types of media buyers. Mm-hmm. Is there any difference in the type of people or how you approach different media buyers? So there is the Facebook guys and the native guys. Do you see yeah. any distinction and differences in behavior? Yeah. So for for every type of, of media buyer or affiliate, mm-hmm. you need to prepare a different content and a different, for example, mm-hmm. for, for native, you need to create articles. Okay. And for Facebook, you need like good videos and, mm-hmm. and images. Okay. Mm-hmm. And for email, 
you need a good HTML templates. Okay, so you need to, in, if you want to create a good affiliate program, you need to prepare all the creatives for all types of affiliates. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there is a difference. And do, do, do you do this internally or do you expect the affiliates, I mean, if they are building a, a pre-sale page, they should be, aren't they supposed to build it on their own and based on what they believe is best practice and, and come up with different angles? That's a good question. So, the you know, the agency, for example, if a native agency will come to your brand and they want to, to start and promote you, probably they will create your article themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, most most of the affiliates use your own creative. So I think that the best way is to prepare yourself. It's, it doesn't supposed to be like a perfect, mm -hmm. just the, the, the fact that you have all type of, of creatives will help you once you want to, to, you know, to work with, for example, mm -hmm. with an affiliate network. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will treat you differently. Mm -hmm. And, and, and once, for example, yeah, affiliates see your, your offer and they mm -hmm. see that you have all type of creative. So automatically you do better than 90 percentage of the, the other players that work in the affiliate world because in the affiliate this is like a field that you cannot see a lot of brands do a professional work. It's very easy to win on this field because nobody do like a good job, I think. No, uh -huh. not nobody, but most of the brands don't uh -huh. treat this because because I think because they don't understand the potential and mm -hmm. they don't understand there is not a lot of knowledge out there because mm -hmm. a lot, all of the knowledge you have about affiliation is from the affiliate point mm -hmm. of view. How to be a better affiliate, how to, you know, mm -hmm. sit on the beach and drink cocktails mm -hmm. and do money. It's bullshit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, and you, don't have, you don't have a lot of knowledge on the other side how to take advantage of affiliates when you want to promote your brand. This type mm -hmm. of content, you don't find a lot. I, if, mm -hmm. I think this is a thing of a matter of uh, awareness. Uh -huh, for sure. Yeah, I agree. And I think if people want to, to learn more about how to conduct, I don't know, a, a good affiliate program, what I normally do just to stand on top of my game, even though I'm not using affiliates, I go often to ClickBank and I enter like the offer with the best gravity, top selling, and normally it's going to be like a diet offer. And you go to the affiliate area and you can see they have like a ton of email swap files and they have a ton of banners and they have like a lot of like seven different VSLs or landing pages. And then you realize that you're in good hands. And if you're an affiliate, you want to promote this brand because you know what they are doing. It seems that, th that they know what they are doing. Yes, but I, I you know, I would treat this uh, information on the networks suspiciously because a lot of times they publish uh, like statistics because they have some interest for you sure. to promote this because they promote the statistics. They, they promote the offers that make for them a lot for of sure. money. So mm -hmm. maybe they have some good deal with one brand Mm -hmm. and they give you like peanuts and, and they want you to promote it but the statistic is not really mm -hmm. what you see so you need to be suspicious on this field even if you believe it's like it looks like you know a big name and mm -hmm. a lot of good looking creatives mm -hmm. for me you know if if i i'm a, an affiliate and somebody affiliate manager of a network tell me listen you have only one creative that i want you to choose a one Prelander, so I will appreciate more because I don't mm -hmm. want to waste my budget on seven different lenders. Ah, I, see. I will appreciate more somebody that will, that will focus me on the right uh -huh. direction. Interesting. Yeah, and it's very interesting. I mean, you're right. It's important to realize that we're working with human beings and human beings will try to optimize their profits. And these, uh, these networks, I mean, I don't know personally the guys at ClickBank or other networks, but you, you can be sure that they are trying to maximize their own profits. Sure. So don't take any any of the numbers that they they claim as, as, as pure data. You obviously do your own research mm -hmm. and test on your own. This is very important to understand. But I do, I also have, I don't know if it's incorrect, but I, I kind of have the perception that a lot of people in the affiliate field are a bit more sneaky. Do, do you agree or, or not really? Unfortunately, this is, you know, the name that this field got to itself. Mm -hmm. But I believe that 
a lot of, I think that the reason, the main reason is maybe because you can hear a lot of fake stories about, you know, easy money making with mm -hmm. uh, with uh, affiliation from the affiliate point of, of view mm -hmm. again. And, and automatically when, when somebody, you know, hear affiliation, you can, you think, okay, well, it sounds like suspicious. I don't believe in it. It, mm -hmm. it won't work. But here, you know, when you are, you are the brand. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you work, you know, smart, mm -hmm. you don't have any reason to not try this. And, and it, it probably, if you do all the steps that need to, 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 you know, that you need to do. Mm -hmm. It will work better than if you will do it with your own money. Because mm -hmm. think about this. You work with professionals. They mm -hmm. they get paid only for good results. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you pay them only once you got the money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like the, the, the safest game in the world. So why mm -hmm. not? Yeah. And it's also one, another thing to, another benefit is the fact that they see a lot of other offers. And if they want to feel it, like, let's say, the media buyer and he's pushing skincare product and he sees good results, and now you're offering as a brand also skincare, so he knows what is working in a way, so he can come and promote you in a positive to if you keep it in-house and you don't know what's working. So these agencies or media buyers, they have also a, a wider perspective of, of the vertical. Yeah, so also, yeah, I affiliates, even if they make some money, they... I will always try to split test several mm -hmm. offers in order to make more money from the mm -hmm. channels. And yeah. Okay. And and what about, we discussed a lot about like launching the affiliate and you emphasize the, the importance of the pricing. Are there any tactics that you believe are very beneficial for the brand while their program is running? So for example, you can say, listen, a leaderboard is a must. Or listen, meeting every month with all the affiliates is a must. Yeah, like stuff mm -hmm. like this. Anything that comes to mind? Yeah, so you need to make sure that people notice you as a brand. Okay, for example, if you want to, to increase your chances to get into an affiliate network, so instead of giving them, for example, you know, the regular offer, like I have a product and this is the payout, mm -hmm. you can do something more interesting. Okay, I did something with uh, Shutterstock, okay, mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Antifelix. I did like a tiered plan. Uh, mm -hmm. So I gave them like the, the regular tiered uh, offer. If you mm -hmm. generate X amount of conversions, you get Y. If you generate mm -hmm. more conversions, you get Y plus. If you mm -hmm. And then I told them, you have the option. If you generate X conversions, you can either get Y or get a gift. Mm -hmm. If you generate two Y conversions, mm -hmm. you can get whatever Z, mm -hmm. or you can get like a tablet. Mm -hmm. And if you get more conversions, you can get a billiard, you know, a snooker mm -hmm. uh, table, for example. Uh -huh. And then when I create this kind of program, okay, mm -hmm. and 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 nice. I and I and I and the affiliates see all of these very cool gifts. Uh -huh. So it looks different. They won't mm -hmm. ignore your offer. And mm -hmm. for you, it costs the same because uh -huh. you don't really care if you pay, you know, $100 or if you pay, you know, a tablet because for yeah, you, it's for the sure. same money. Same. For but sure. for, you know, but you need to make, to understand that once your offer go live on, on the affiliate network, they publish mm -hmm. this, they usually, you know, send some emails to all of their email uh -huh. lists. Mm -hmm. And if they send, I have a new offer, it gives $50 payout. Or if they said, I have a new offer, if you generate six conversions, you get a, a 100 payout or mm -hmm. a tablet. And if you generate more, you can get a DJI drone. And if you get mm -hmm. more, you can get a motor, an electric uh, a scooter. Mm -hmm. It looks totally different. Uh -huh. And you will get all the eyeballs on your offer. And mm -hmm. this is how you need to work when you when you work with affiliates. You need mm -hmm. to get their attention. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it reminded me of the I think it's the affiliate uh, program of ClickFunnels, in which they give they give cars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yes. Is, so this is something that you know the fact that you are telling this right now means that it works. You know because sure. you know, people remember this kind of stuff, and even if it's a gimmick. It uh -huh. works. So, yeah, yeah it, 
it's, it's crazy how gimmicks work, but we, we often overlook them because we say, oh, it's just a gimmick. But to be honest, gimmicks work because we are human beings and yeah. we're, we're simple. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nice. This is very interesting. Uh, do, do you remember in this case, are you, do you measure? Like the performance of the affiliate program, I mean, okay, based on we did this promotion and we saw a spike in affiliate recruitment. Is this something mm-hmm. that you do, or it's already like too much data? Okay, so for example, if I'm a, like a small brand and I do the outreach to new affiliates myself, okay, so yeah, I always split test my outreach content, okay? Mm-hmm. So if I need to write an email to agencies, So I sent like 10 emails or 20 emails and then I, I, I tried to understand what, what works and what doesn't, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the, and yeah, you need to split test uh, your outreach content when mm-hmm. you talk with affiliates. And also when you, you know, work, if, for example, your offer is shown on affiliate network, also mm-hmm. there you need to, to split test, okay? If I'm, for example... Uh, know that I got like a lot of conversions okay mm-hmm. so I want to to measure the traffic source that work best for me okay so mm-hmm. if I am a brand and I see a lot of conversion or, or maybe it's not supposed to be a lot of conversion I see maybe two or three conversions so I will ask the affiliate manager hey, listen I see mm-hmm. that I got a few conversions what type of traffic source generate these conversions let mm-hmm. me know. I am willing to pay more to get more and mm-hmm. please make sure you tell all the other traffic sources that are the same to try and push this offer because mm-hmm. we have a proof that it works okay mm-hmm. so you need always to understand how you can duplicate your wins mm-hmm. interesting okay this is very interesting I mean this is I told you already that I had an interview about two weeks ago with someone else who we, we probably published two episodes kind of in a row but he also discussed the media buyer side of, of affiliate marketing and this is something that as you said I think there is a big gap of awareness people don't use the media buyers at least in the e-commerce game I think that in the casino or stuff like this everybody knows everybody knows the affiliates and in this perspective, I think that the e-commerce game is a, a lot behind other other verticals um but it's very interesting that we are conducting this conversation because I think there as you said it's there it has a lot of potential and this leads me to my next question do you think that the media buyers the fact that you recruit media buyers has also brand awareness benefits or or not really because I I think it can be also be a negative if you don't know how to manage them it can also cannibalize your offer and they can also ruin your brand brand name so I'm just curious to hear about like the the derivatives of recruiting media buyers so I I believe uh, these days the marketing game it's a game of multi-channel marketing so I think mm-hmm. it's can it's can only do not only but you know in most cases it's it will do you good for you if uh, you, you, you work with uh, with uh, agencies mm-hmm. and media buyers because they are professionals they know the job okay so most chances that if they will create for example a, an article for a tabula or other it will be better than what you will mm-hmm. generate yourself okay mm-hmm. and they by the way for uh, they, they are usually open tabula or, or, or outbrain account and Mm-hmm. from zero just to promote mm-hmm. your own brand so mm-hmm. they know how to implement the right pixels and they know how to measure and they know what content that hooks to uh, mm-hmm. works well uh, mm-hmm. and I think that you want as many as you know professional marketers to promote your brands mm-hmm. uh, I think so. but from a From like a, do you see any benefits from like a SCO or do you think it will be a, a good lift because just other people are starting to promote you so the brand awareness goes up I know it's how to measure but what is your like what do you consider do you consider it like also like a branding beneficial from a branding perspective yeah you know a lot of brands that work with affiliates they tell me listen I, I see a lot of uh, on the Google Analytics I see a lot of uh, traffic and I don't know why mm-hmm. what, what is the reason mm-hmm. and it's very obvious you know before, because once you work with a lot of for example influencers and mm-hmm. they create a lot of content and mm-hmm. they create uh, like a uh, TikTok videos and YouTube videos and then you see all of, you, you see your brands as a user you see 
the brand mm -hmm. and then you go and search on google and then you go and, and search and and, and uh, write the, the exact url mm -hmm. and this is what uh, you know help to the branding and to mm -hmm. get more traffic okay and mm -hmm. by the way if you do it, it right you can mm -hmm. earn on seo uh, mm -hmm. very easily okay for example i'll tell you an example Mm -hmm. I have some clients that the focus is that I work with him is only with influencers. But, and what mm -hmm. I do, I tell the influencers, listen, I am willing to pay you like X amount of dollars only to create mm -hmm. the first explainer video about the product. I will mm -hmm. pay you. Mm -hmm. And from this point, I will pay you only on a commission base. Mm -hmm. And then once I have this explainer video, I create mm -hmm. a, a VSL, a landing mm -hmm. page, okay? and with exact keywords okay that mm -hmm. promoted the, the brand mm -hmm. and once i have a lot of influencers that create mm -hmm. for me a lot of videos and i create a lot of landing pages with with keywords okay mm -hmm. so on for the on the long run you mm -hmm. earn from the seo okay sure. you can also tell them you can also tell them listen i want to create a, an explainer video but i want to upload the video on my own youtube channel okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can earn twice so mm -hmm. once google counts it's like it's your own content and, and two they will promote it on their own mm -hmm. channels okay because they created mm -hmm. this video and uh, this is the deal that you want to that you close with them so mm -hmm. on the long run you can easily create like a, a plan mm -hmm. to to earn twice uh, mm -hmm. one from the influencers and one from the seo because you have a lot of different traffic sources all of them talking about your brand and if you do it right you can you can you know build all of these pages with specific keywords so you will earn also mm -hmm. from the SEO awesome and it, it, i know our, our, our time is running out but can you share like quickly maybe the tactics of how you do this at scale do you scrape it from youtube you get their emails you send it out what are the i know it varies varies but what is the, like the 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 price tag normally for a small affiliate uh, or influencer, like just give a, like a general overview. Well, so it depends. It depends on, on the competition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, if it's an influencer with small audience, so maybe he will agree to work with you only on a CPA basis. If he has a, a bigger audience space, so probably he will ask for, for money to generate the, the, the first content. Mm -hmm. which makes sense because you want them to create high quality video for mm -hmm. you okay you don't want them to create like a shitty one mm -hmm. so once you have the high quality uh video from this one you work only on a cpa and mm -hmm. you know the tactic is, is is the same you can just you know create the list mm -hmm. the first thing to do is to map all the the prospects all the potential partners on youtube on tiktok on linkedin on whatever mm -hmm. okay and once you have all of the list, okay, so you try to outreach. So the first, mm -hmm. you can outreach via email. And then mm -hmm. if they don't respond, you can send, I don't know, like a social, uh, you can mm -hmm. send them uh, through LinkedIn or, or a message on TikTok or, or a comment on, on their video on, on, on YouTube. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't stop. To outreach an influencer if I want him, unless he tell me this and stop. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, and I think I think we can do a, a a full episode about this, like how you do the outreach and and convincing people and different subject lines and should the the email outreach should be long, short. Obviously, it depends, but I think this is for another episode. Is there anything that you wanted to discuss today that we didn't have a chance yet? Or anything that you would like to mention or closing thoughts? You know, I think it's very, very simple. Maybe the, the only thing we, we, we didn't mention, so you need, you have, you know, a tracking system that you need to measure all of the activity. So this is about the, the, the technical stuff, but again, mm -hmm. it's very cheap and easy today to, to manage a tracking system and mm -hmm. to get a bit, you know, view of the performance of your partners. No, I think, I think the... The only thing I want to tell all of the, you know, the e-com brands that list that listen to, to us right now, why not try to do it? It's it's mm -hmm. it's it's cost effective and it's you know it will help you to 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 get high quality marketers to your brand. Mm -hmm. So go for it. Well, for sure, interesting. Thank you so much, Eli. Where can people reach out to you? I mean, Dean, or do you have any other social presence or 
Where is the yeah, you can reach me out. You can you can reach me out on LinkedIn. You just search El Yedri, or mm -hmm. you can uh, reach me out on my uh, website, uh, mm -hmm. affiliate-manager.io. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Eli. Have a nice, have a lovely rest of your evening, and we'll keep in touch. I might invite you for for another podcast about the outreach strategies. Looking forward for it. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. <laughs> awesome. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. This is Yaron again. Just a few more things before you take off. Number one, if you want to learn more about e-commerce and marketing, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, which is called Ecom X Factor Official. Number two, check out our Facebook group, which is called Ecom X Factor Marketing and E-commerce Mastermind. This is a great place to ask questions and connect with other business owners. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to share it with your friends and colleagues, plus leave a review at your favorite podcast app.